everyone, and welcome to the Universal Print in Gov webinar and AMA. My name is Rochelle Chung, and I'm a product manager on the Universal Print team. Today, I'm joined by some of my Universal Print colleagues, Brayden, Issa, Jimmy, Sarab, and Suman, who will be helping to answer your questions in chat. So feel free to add all the questions um, into the comments there, and we will get to those as soon as we can. What will we be talking about today? So today I'll be providing an overview of Universal Print, how you can stay secure with Universal Print, how we're stronger together with Microsoft 365, how you can customize your print experience, and then finally, I'll be talking more about the upcoming private preview for Universal Print in Gov. Attackers haven't wasted any time capitalizing on the rapid move to hybrid work. Every day, cyber criminals and nation states alike have improved their targeting, speed, and accuracy as the world has adapted to working outside the office. This is a quote by David Weston, one of the Microsoft VPs. These changes that were mentioned have put cybersecurity issues and risks at the top of the list when it comes to worries or concerns for business decision makers in the years ahead. The world of hybrid work is evolving and so are the threats and challenges. 38% of people are already working in a hybrid environment. 52% of people are considering transitioning to remote or hybrid work. 83% of organizations have experienced at least one firmware attack in the past two years, and 25% of organizations have identified unauthorized access to sensitive data as a top security threat. Microsoft is making investments in hardware, software, applications, and services to deliver on the promise of providing a more intelligent, secure, and less costly work environment. As many are changing from everyone in the office to a more hybrid model, this is even more important. So let's take a look into how Universal Print can help in this journey. As security becomes more important, even your print infrastructure becomes the target for attacks. Printers do not have to be on your corporate network and users do not have to VPN in to access your printers. With Universal Print, you can put your printers on a network that is isolated from your corporate network and directly connected to your Microsoft Cloud infrastructure. Users can always access your cloud as they function the internet from wherever they work. All connections between users and printers and your cloud is encrypted using TLS, so the data is protected. And any data we store, like your print queue, is in your tenant, under your control, and is GPRS compliant. Additionally, many organizations want to lower the cost of printing and maintain their print infrastructure. Eliminating those print servers that are still in your corporate network and moving the print infrastructure to the cloud can yield high cost savings. Lastly, universal print is effortless for users as nothing changes in how they print. They no longer have to use a VPN from home. Also, they can print from their phone or other devices using the browser. And soon we will have Mac OS support that will be coming um, for the general customer. Organizations are transitioning to the cloud and need a solution to replace on-premises print servers. And this is where Universal Print comes in. How Universal Print works is quite simple. Once IT configures and registers printers in Azure Active Directory, they can publish the printers and assign printer access to the appropriate user groups. Users can then easily discover the nearest printer that they have access to, add the printer, and print immediately. IT is able to manage print and receive reports on printer usage. Communication with Universal Print is based on the Microsoft Graph API and the Internet Printing Protocol Standard, also known as IPP. Using IPP allows printing clients to submit print jobs to the cloud service the same way they're submitted to any IPP compliant printer. The protocol also allows print devices like Universal Print Ready Printers and Universal Print Connectors to retrieve print jobs and communicate status. 
Universal Print has four key components. First and central is the Universal Print service. It orchestrates all the queues and is integrated tightly with Azure Active Directory. It uses Azure Active Directory to verify licensing as well as authenticate each call into the platform. Secondly is the client. Universal Print support is integrated in Windows 10 version 1903 onwards. It uses the standard HTTPS calls to print and uses the standard set of IPP attributes as defined by Mapria. That means no installation of any print drivers, and in the near future, print clients can be built for any platform. You can also see here that you can print to Universal Print from OneDrive for the web. So that's another option as well. And as mentioned before, Mac OS native support will be available very shortly. The third and fourth components of Universal Print are the two types of hardware that it's compatible with. Universal Print is compatible with two things. The first is what we call Universal Print Ready Printers, and the second are legacy printers, which are enabled by the Universal Print Connector. With Universal Print Ready Printers, we offer the best possible Universal Print experience. A Universal Print Ready Printer is a printer that is Universal Print compatible firmware, so it provides native support to Universal Print. We are working with most printer manufacturers to make Universal Print Ready Printers readily available market, but we also already have so many printer models from Lexmark, Brother, Canon, Konak Minolta, Toshiba, to just name a few, that are already there in market and available um, to purchase. And you can find a full list of them at aka.ms slash UP integrations. And in a couple of slides, I'll also provide that link as well. We also have the Universal Print Connector and Legacy Printers. So for those organizations who want to continue to use their existing printers, they can leverage the Universal Print Connector. So what that is, is it's a small Windows application that can connect multiple printers to the Microsoft 365 Cloud, and they can run on any Windows PC on the network. So until a customer's organization can make the full transition to Universal Print Ready Printers, with the Universal Print Connector, you can still enjoy the management capabilities and ease of use that Universal Print offers. In this diagram here, you can see that Universal Print, as well as many of the associated services that Universal Print um, integrates with, um, are in the GCC environment. The only exception is Azure Active Directory, which remains um, in the same location as worldwide. For GCC High, Universal Print and all its integrated services are all in the GCC High environment, and that includes Azure Active Directory. The great thing about Universal Print is that a lot of potential customers already have access to Universal Print. Universal Print is included with commercial and educational Windows 10 and 11 per user subscriptions and all the Microsoft 365 subscriptions that include Windows. On the government side, Universal Print will be in the Windows 10 and 11 Enterprise E5 SKUs or subscriptions uh, for both GCC and GCC High and also in the Microsoft 365 uh, G3 and G5 licenses. I kind of touched on this before, but system requirements include having Azure Active Directory, being either on Windows 11 or Windows 10, 1903 um, onwards, and also Windows on ARM. How this licensing and subscription works is that with each license in Microsoft 365 E3 and E5, as well as Microsoft 365 G3, G5, these include 100 print jobs per license. For the subscriptions of Windows 10 and 11 Enterprise E3 and E5 and Microsoft Enterprise F3, these include five print jobs per license. All of these print jobs and their licenses are, or all the print jobs are pulled together. Um, so for example, a tenant with 3000 Microsoft 365 E3 user licenses have 100 print jobs each. The, then the, in the example here, there's 4,000 Microsoft 365 F3 user licenses, and these have five print jobs each. Pulled together, there's 320,000 print jobs um, that any user 
um, what these user, user licenses can grab from. So for example, one um, user could use up 310,000 print jobs, whereas another user may use up only one or zero. More information can be found um, at ak.ms slash UP license. But one thing before we move from this slide that I wanted to touch on is in case the number of uh, pooled print jobs is not enough for you per month, additional print jobs, uh, print job packs are available in these monthly packs of either 500 or 10,000. Um, that's available right now in the commercial space, but these will also be available um, for government customers as well. As I mentioned um, a couple slides ago, um, these are the manufacturers that we have partnered with who already have universal print ready printers in market. And when you go to the link at aka.ms slash UP integrations, you can find a full list of the exact models that are universal print ready printers. And once again, universal print ready printers offer that seamless experience for universal print and one of the best experiences that we can offer but also there's the universal print connector that can be used with legacy printers so how can you stay secure with universal print not only are commercial customers needing increased security in their technology infrastructure but it's also imperative to our government customers as well to help protect the United States from increasingly sophisticated cyber threats, the White House issued um, Executive Order 14028 on improving the nation's cybersecurity, which requires United States federal government organizations to take action to strengthen national cybersecurity. This is just a little snippet from Section, uh, section 3 of this executive order, but it specifically calls for federal agencies and their suppliers to modernize their approach to cybersecurity by accelerating the move to secure cloud services and implementing a zero trust architecture. Zero trust is the modern security model that solves some of the complexity of today's cloud centered IT environment and enables organizations to embrace a mobile and hybrid workforce while protecting people, devices, applications and data wherever they're located. At its core, a zero trust network applies this modern security model and assumes that no device or connection is trusted by default. Instead, each connection needs to be verified, regardless of whether the connection is coming from the internet or an internal network. Everything can ultimately be breached and the goal is to minimize and contain that breach. So how does universal print fit into this zero trust um, architecture. Universal Print is a cloud service that's integrated with Azure Active Directory. Communication between cl the client and the printer flows through the Universal Print Cloud service. And this architecture enables network isolation of printers, including the Universal Print Connector software from the rest of the organization's resources. There's a lot here on this slide, and you can read more about this at aka.ms slash UP Zero Trust. But the key is that the Universal Print Service does not implicitly trust any incoming connections. We validate the identity and scope of the calling user or device and limit access based on the information as reported by Azure Active Directory. So as I mentioned, if you'd like to know more about this, we have a blog. Um, at aka.ms slash UP Zero Trust that provides more information. But of course, if you have more questions, you can include them um, in the comment section for us to respond to. How are we stronger together with Microsoft 365? So we have integration with OneDrive and Excel, so you can print from any platform when using these Microsoft applications. And here um, on the next slide is, is an example of um, the print experience from printing from a device to universal uh, to a universal print ready printer by launching Excel in a browser. So here you can see um, Excel in a browser. You're able to find um, these universal print ready printers, and these are denoted by a little uh, cloud next to the printer. There, um, you can also get a similar experience with OneDrive for Business and SharePoint. We also have integration with um, Intune or Microsoft Endpoint Manager. 
here we are showing a sample configured policy within the Microsoft Endpoint Manager Admin Center portal. The policy based configuration was launched in 2022. So prior to this, admins had to do some pretty heavy lifting to deploy printers on user devices. Now the configuration of policies require uh, requires the admin to just provide printer details. Admins can then monitor the printer deployment status using the Microsoft Endpoint Manager reports. And lastly, also integration with Windows 365 and Azure Virtual Desktop. So we're offering a print experience that's tailored for the world's first cloud PC and also shared virtual desktops. Here's just a snapshot of printers from Windows 365 uh, PC. You can see at the top, there's a cloud printer there. There's Xerox there. Um, and as I noted before, you can tell it's a universal print printer because it has the little cloud um, behind that printer there. Now I'd like to move on to how you can customize your print experience. As I mentioned previously, users can now easily discover the printers they have access to through an admin's ability to easily deploy printers through Microsoft Endpoint Manager. But some users are still concerned about privacy. They want to keep certain documents safe. In Windows 11, Universal Print now supports the print industry standard for pin printing. Uh, what this feature does is it enables printer manufacturers to add pin release support when integrating with Universal Print. So customers will be able to enter a numeric pin to ensure that when they go to the printer, they're the ones that will be able to enter their unique pin that they type in, which are whatever pin they choose, and they're able to release the print job at the printer. When a Universal Print Ready printer supports pin release, it tells Universal Print that it supports pin release and how many digits in the pin that it supports. So in this example, someone is trying to print a cat picture. Um, you can see that there is the option here for um, printing, and this particular printer supports pin between, uh, supports a pin between four to seven digits. Let's say the user types in one, two, three, four, then they go to the printer and they have to type in one, two, three, four again to in order to get that print job to print out. Oftentimes organizations want even further customization beyond pin printing. Printer drivers from manufacturers have traditionally provided rich capabilities like watermark um, and other custom print options, but printer drivers have led to many challenges for customers, manufacturers, Microsoft, and everyone in the print channel. In Windows 11, we invested in a platform within Windows called the Print Support App, or PSA. Manufacturers will be able to associate their printers with a Print Support App, which is a custom Windows Store application. Manufacturers can then easily add in all their customized print options and workflows into this Print Support App. And this Print Support App, or PSA, uh, provides many benefits, including removing the pain points that everyone had with print drivers, while also retaining the custom attributes that organizations provide and that users need. These PSAs can be written for universal print ready printers, and we are already working with several OEMs to develop their PSAs. So here's an example of how PSA works. You can see here that there is a, uh, someone is trying to print a calendar, and when they click to more settings, um, this Xerox PSA is what pops up. There are custom options here that are not um, able to be shown in that regular calendar print um, app that you'd normally see. Um, so there's customization that can be done on Xerox's side to provide um, additional options for the user. All right, now I'm gonna touch upon our private preview for government um, in both GCC and GCC High. The sign up link is here, aka.ms slash up gov private preview. Um, and so once you sign up, uh, once you'll, you go there, you'll see a form that asks you to, uh, different questions. Um, and if you're selected for the preview, um, you will get an email um, in the upcoming weeks that will ask you for some more information. So 
just some more information about this private preview. This private preview and when there is general availability um, for um, universal print in the government cloud, um, you will see um, future compatibility with the commercial cloud. The private preview will start in early June. Um, as I mentioned, after going to aka.ms slash upgov private preview, um, once you express interest, um, if you uh, are selected, you will have to make sure you confirm your eligibility for this program, which I'll discuss in the next slide, um, sign a private preview agreement, and then provide us with your tenant ID so that we can um, make sure that you are um, properly um, onboarded to our private preview. In terms of eligibility, you must have all one of the following licenses. So if you don't have one of these licenses, you are not eligible, unfortunately, to join the private preview. Um, if you do have one of these licenses, you will be eligible. Um, so you can still fill out the form if you want, but we will be double checking to make sure everyone has these um, licenses so that um, you're eligible to join in on our private preview. Um, as mentioned, the private preview will start um, early June and it will um, end when we have general availability and everyone will be able to use um, universal print in Gov at that time. For additional information, you can visit the universal print start page. So to learn more, print.microsoft.com is where you can go. Um, if you're completely new to universal print, I would really recommend going to aka.ms slash updocs, as that would be where all the starter info is for universal print. And if you really want to know what it's like as an admin to use universal print, what kind of common actions you would have to do and how to navigate um, the universal print portal, um, we have an excellent 10 minute guided um, simulation tour um, that will walk you through the basic actions that admins would need to take when navigating universal print. Um, so that brings me to the end of this webinar. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we will continue to answer the questions that are in the chat or in the comment section, um, and we will see you next time. Thank you.